Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, which is part of IBM Europe. In this movie, we're going to look at role-based access control, which is part of AIX6. All systems administrators are aware that when they give away root password, or they use a set UID program, or they use the sudo command, or whatever tricks they're using, it's very bad for security. For AIX6, we now have enhanced RBAC, and this is very much the answer. To put it very simply, we make all our root programs secure, and only available to root, and we can use the file permissions to do that. Then we're going to use the AX kernel to enforce RBAC access to particular items. There are two things that you typically want to do on a regular basis, and we'll look at those in this movie. Firstly, you want to allocate a new role to a user so they can gain access to a particular function. Then perhaps we've got a new command or a new application, and we want to add this to the RBAC system, again so that we can give permission to use these new things to particular users. To enable RBAC is quite simple. We run this one line command as root and then we reboot the system. I'm always amazed how many times I get asked I have a very secure system, but now I want to temporarily switch off security for some reason. Of course, that is an oxymoron. If you have a system that you can switch off security, it is not high security. And this is the case with RBAX. You can't just switch it on and off as you want, because it is a high security system. Every time a process on behalf of a user wants to access a new file, a new command, or a new device. The kernel checks that you have permission to do this, and it uses the read, write, and execute privileges on the files to do this check. Now with RBACs we have an extra path. These are highlighted in the yellow boxes. As you ask for access to resource, the kernel checks is this command, in this case, in the database, and if the answer is yes, it then checks that the user is authorized to use this particular resource. If the answer again is yes, then the kernel will raise the privilege of this process to bypass the access right checks, and thereby the process can carry on executing and access the new resource. When I first read up about RBAC, I got terribly confused because I had roles, authorizations and privileges and I got them all mixed up. So in this diagram I hope to explain what's going on. Now I hope on the left hand side we all understand what a user is. A user can be using one or more roles at a time. And they use this SW role or switch role command to decide which are the active roles at any one time. Now roles are just a useful name or grouping of authorizations. Don't get hung up about roles at all. It's just a convenient way of giving a user a whole bunch of authorizations, but calling it just one thing and giving it one name. Now let's look at authorizations, and I like to think of these as the keys to a particular resource. There's lots and lots of them. There's 263 defined by default with AIX6. The ones for AIX nearly all start with AIX on the front and then it breaks down the parts of AX into functional areas for example device or FS for file systems processes, security, system and so on. In our example here we have AX.FS for file systems and then there's various things we want to do to a file system for example manage them so we have dot .manage on the end. Then if we're managing our file systems in AIX there are various commands that we want access to and so we put dot .change to recognize the chfs command to change our file systems. Now if we name the full thing like this, then we just have an authorization to make changes to file systems. But if we just used aix.fs, that would include all the sub-authorizations, so we'd actually pick up a lot of authorizations in a shorter name. Now let's turn our attention to privileges, and I like to think of these as the locks on particular resources. For each resource, like a file, or a command, or a device, we have a particular lock called a privilege. You'll notice that the arrow goes the other way, because when we define a privilege, 
we actually name the authorization that gives you the access to this lock. It's like defining the particular key that gets you access to the resource. At the bottom we have the commands that we actually use. The set KST command is unusual. That's the one that puts the database into the kernel and activates our resources. This is a AIX system, it's running on a Power6 machine. And at the top window we have a root user, and lower down we have two other users called Sally and John. Now John works late into the night and he quite often finds fil file systems filling up. And he wants to run this chfs command change file system, but he's not allowed to at the moment. He wants me to give him the root user, but I don't think that's a good idea. What I'd like to do is use RBAC to give him a particular role in which he's allowed to do that but keep the root user to myself. Now there are 10 defined by default. This one ISSO is used as the information security officer and there's two other ones defined here systems administrator and systems operator but one that takes my eye is this one here called FS short for file system admin. Perhaps I could give that to the John user. So let's investigate more about what's the contents of this FS admin role. What authority does that give him? So here are the details of this role. It gives him these following authorizations. They all seem to be AXFS manage something. This first one here is manage change, which looks like the sort of thing I want to give him. It also includes things like create, defrag, dump, recover, remove a file system, but I trust John to not mess up the file systems, he just wants to change them most of the time. So let's have a look at the details of what we're going to authorize if we give him this particular authorization. So we'll use the ls auth command to find out what we can about this AXFS manage change. Now surprisingly little if we use that command, we just find the name. If we delete the uh, option there, we can find out all the information about this authorization, which is surprisingly little. There is a default message in here, which is like uh, a prompt to us to understand what's going on. Change attributes of a file system. So that sounds about right. So we need to know now the commands that this authorization is connected to. To do that, we have to look at the privileges and we need to use this lssecatra command c for commands a will just give us a, a list a simple list including the access authorizations and all now that went up the screen, screen pretty quickly there's actually nearly 800 of these commands in here so let's uh, rerun that command and we'll pull out the ones that have the authorization that we're actually interested in. So these are the commands we're going to give access to John to run if we give him this authorization. The first two of these helper scripts are used by the um, Smitty and, and Smit behind the covers and then here's a list of the actual commands we're going to give him. Here's the change file system that we're actually interested in but there's some others in here we're going to give him access to. Uh, do these make sense? So we have config vg, change paging space, switching the paging space on and off, shrinking it. Yes that makes like a sensible set of things that we might want to give John. So let's change the John user and give him this role. Now this won't get actioned unless we actually update the AX kernel and tell it that uh, these new authorizations are now available when we want them activated. Now if we go to the John user He's got to switch roles to get himself access to this new role. We're going 
to check that it's really the John user at the command line here before we allow him access to it. And now see if we can change his file systems. So there we go. John now has access to this change fs command and he can change the file systems as he likes. Now for our second demonstration we're going to have a new application installed on the machine. Here it is called Enmon, a very exciting performance monitoring tool. OK, I confess I'm the developer, but I find it exciting anyway. We've set it up here so that only root has XP permission here, so the root user can run the Enmon command. There we go. And we want to give access to it to Sally, but not John. And as we see here, that Sally can't actually run this at the moment. So how do we do that? Well, we want to add it to the role-based access control database, and we want to set it up as a separate authority so we can control just this application by itself. So the first thing we have to do is to create a new authority. Now, I might have other commands, so let me create a top-level authority called custom and in there we'll create one individually for our new application. Now we want to tie this new program to this particular new authority that we've just created. So this is the command I'm going to do that. This is the set security attribute minus C because it's a command and here's the command name here and I'm going to tie it to this new authority to give it access to it for custom dot n one, so we'll do that next. Now we can't give an authority this custom dot n one to a particular user, so let me create a role for this new authority. It's a new role called n one role, and we're going to tie it to this new authority custom n one. Now we can assign that new role to the user Sally. Again, we've used this command before, so I'll just cut and paste it in. N1 role is a new role for Sally. Now, none of this can be used until we've updated this database in the kernel, so that when you try and access these resources, it will actually find it in the database and say, OK, understand this file and this authority means that Sally can actually use it. So we're going to use this set K ST command again. We can see here it's loaded the authorization table that we've amended here and the command table with the N1 command in it now. Now let's see if Sally can access the application. Nope, she can't. So let's remember now we need to switch roles. Prove who she is. And she has a new application. Excellent. Now she can start monitoring the machine. Does John have access to them? No, he doesn't. Well, he can play with his file systems. Role based access control has been a large investment by IBM. First of all, to make systems administration easier, but also to make AX even more secure. And once you understand the basics, it's fairly simple to use. If you want more information, I'd recommend this red book.